You're listening to the Beyond Sundays podcast. Each week, we talk to people just like you from all over the place who share stories of God's faithfulness. Today, we sit down with Shane Robertson. Oh man, we talk about everything from success and failure, faith and identity, family, business, and the opportunities we have to bring heaven to earth. You're not gonna wanna miss this conversation, so let's get to it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Beyond Sundays podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I have with me Shane Robertson in the studio. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? Good. A little nervous. <laughs> you're all gonna... this equipment in your face. I know. You're going to do great, though. Well, I'm so thankful for you to be here. Thanks for your time. Why don't, before we jump into everything that we're going to discuss today, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? I guess about how old I am, how long <laughs> I've been married, and all that kind of stuff. Just family, friend, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. I'm 54 years old. I have to dye my beard now, or it looks like Santa Claus. I've <laughs> uh, been married 34 years, have three kids. Uh, Tosser's an architect here in town, and Taylor, my daughter, is a physical therapist in uh, Arkansas, and then my baby Tanner is in the business with us with Mass Mutual. And then awesome. now we have four grandkids, So, and I heard the might be some more on the way. Not Woo-hoo! yet, but they're working on it. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Grandkids, I hear... That's a special season. Uh, grandkids are really the only thing in life that meets your expectations. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that bad towards my wife. Yeah. Well, you and you also have an amazing wife. I do have an amazing I'm wife. I'm blessed to know your family. You guys are incredible and have been a part of our Beltway Park family for a long time. Since 97. Wow. So before really even Pastor David, right? Or right, uh, right around that time. Right when uh, David came, yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I usually start the the podcast with a question because the show is called Beyond Sundays. Could you share a little bit about what God is showing you or revealing to you that is Beyond Sundays? I'll just tell to walk in sonship uh, instead of an orphan spirit. I grew up, uh, all of us have certain wounds, but I grew up, my parents were divorced and I went out on my own when I was about 16. And so didn't quite realize how much I struggled with some orphan spirit stuff throughout my life. And I would say in the last mm, 20 years, he's really opened my eyes to that. In the last five, he's really taken me deeper in just how to walk in sonship and acceptance and identity and rest instead of trying to think you have to do everything on your own. Yeah, that's good. Well, and just coming out of, I mean, not too long ago, we ended the Rest for Life series, which you said was, you know, obviously an encouragement, but God had been kind of doing these things in your life even before the series that we launched in September. Um, And you had been kind of, you read a book. Could you share a little bit about the book that you had read about sonship? Yeah. Well, it first started when I was about 35. The Lord just showed me where uh, it was first Timothy. We were going to look that up and we didn't. Oh, Uh, I did. I did. Let me pull it up. Uh, First Timothy talks about not having a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And so he showed me that I was just doing things out of life for the wrong motives. It might be even ministry or serving people, but I was doing it more out of a fear fear of failure than versus out of a calling, Mm -hmm. you know, what we're supposed to do. And then uh, I read a book, uh, Spiritual Sonship, no, From Spiritual Orphan to Spiritual Sonship by Jack Frost. Mm -hmm. And that really opened my eyes to sonship. And then my wife put... Uh, Leif's books in my hand, the, that book we just read at church, uh, there's actually, the first ones were four little books, which is nice because as a guy, you like a small book. Uh, and it just took sonship on, for me, just put it on steroids mm-hmm. as far as really understanding the thought process. Mm-hmm. And so it's not that we don't walk as orphans still now, my wife and I, but we recognize it. Yeah. We have fun with it when we have a good fight. <laughs> And we go, just the other day, we had a good fight, and I woke up and said, ooh, I went all orphan on you yesterday, didn't I? <laughs> and so we laugh about it, and we're able to talk through it. So at least yeah. you can recognize it. Yeah. Not that you walk in it perfectly, perfectly but it's nice to recognize. Mm-hmm. So, But those are the books I'd read. Oh, and there's a new one. I just told you what was the name of it. Uh, uh, Heart of a Warrior. Yeah, Heart of a Warrior. Yeah, by yeah. Uh, what's Thompson? What's up? What was the author on it? Thompson? I don't remember, but oh. we will put the links of all these books in the show notes for okay. our listeners. And I'm just now getting into that, but you know, I, the Lord seems to, when he starts teaching me something, he knows it takes me a while. Mm-hmm. And so this is about the third or fourth book 
that someone has given me on sonship. And mm. so I, th- I think uh, I think he wants me to learn something there. Yeah, so. he often speaks in themes, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the verse we'd mentioned <clears throat> earlier was 2 Timothy 1.7, for those right. that want to know that reference. Um, well, switching gears for a moment, you recently were named the Forbes t- list of top financial security professionals in the state of Texas, which is amazing. Congratulations Thank on you. that recognition. That's incredible. Um, what an accomplishment. But I'd love to find out from you, what was that day like? How did you find out? Was there cake? I mean, like, <laughs> just explain what that was like when you actually found out about that. Well, it's kind of funny. I actually did that interview well over a year ago, and I forgot all about it. Wow. Uh, they asked me about my client service and just different things. And I just forgot about it, and I made the Forbes list, and I'm not on uh, any type of social media, so I did not know. Oh, wow. (laughs) And so I went to a meeting in Dallas, and they announced it there that I had uh, made that list. And I looked over at a buddy, and I said, who did they just say made the Forbes list? And he goes, you, stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, okay. Wow. And so really, I thought it was pretty cool. I, I didn't really know what to do with it. And then I told my daughter-in-law, Danielle Robertson, and she's like social media crazy woman. That's how I and found so, out was through her. <laughs> she goes, oh, we need to do something with that. Yeah. And I said, well, I don't know what you need to do. You need to be careful with that because Mass Mutual's compliance and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. I said, but I'm sure if you just tell a few people and then somehow she got it on the news and stuff. And so really it was a Friday. I don't know what day it, it was. I was driving to my place in New Mexico and my phone just blew up. Mm-hmm. I mean, just people calling and congratulating. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Pretty cool. Well, yeah. can you explain to all the listeners what it is that you do? I'm a financial advisor with Mass Mutual. So I do I do a lot of life insurance, long-term care, disability, those type products. Mm-hmm. In our office, we have some guys that are securities licensed that also do investment advising. And so through our office, we can pretty much do a whole plan for someone or just handle a couple buckets mm-hmm. you know, for them. So, mm-hmm. And how long have you been doing this? Well, I guess that's part of this podcast. Yeah. I, I started in 88. I did, I did the business for a couple of years, uh, but then I had an opportunity to work at a camp, uh, up Camp Ozark for uh, just a Christian camp up in Arkansas. And so I got out of the, out of the business after being in it a couple of years. And did that for three years, then got back in the business. Uh, did it for, I guess, probably from 93 to 2005 or 6. I don't know if I have my exact date right. About 15 years. Wow. Really got tired, though, mm-hmm. uh, because I was motivated by fear, fear of failure. Uh, you know, it can motivate you for a while, but you really burn out if you're, whether it's ministry or sales or anything you're doing. If you're doing it out of fear of failure or fear of what people think or from an orphan spirit, always trying to earn your identity, yeah, uh, you just get tired. Yeah. And so I got back in the business 2012. I got out in 2006, I think, five or six. And but I did it different. I said, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna serve people, and you know, we'll see how this thing goes. But I, I felt called to do it. Yeah. You know, a calling to do it, and. Uh, and I had maintained most of those clients either, uh, when I was in and out of the business, cause my brother stayed in the business the whole time and, uh, just did it for different reasons. Mm-hmm. And it's just been amazing. Uh, the, the, how much energy you can have and carry forward when you're doing it for being called to glorify the Lord and serve, serve people each day. Mm-hmm. You know, my clients don't know this. I, on my folder i have their names and i circle it remember that book that we read circle maker yes and so i circle that i circle their names in prayer you know before the meetings and stuff and i do have a few people ask that go what's that about you know why is my name circled and some of them i just tell i always forget your name so i wrote it down and uh but really that's what i'm doing is well it is to remember their name yeah but then i just circle it and you know say hey lord be be part of this meeting so wow i love that and leading in that way in business makes all the difference. I mean, you said it so yourself. It's like when faith is important and it's a value and we're operating from a place of sonship or daughtership, it makes all the difference in the world when it comes to, you know, there's not the grind. There's not the comparison. There's not the fear. There's just peace. And there's rest in knowing that God's got it. And I'm yeah. gonna, my job is to be faithful and I'm going to entrust the fruits to him. 
And for me to, uh, you know, I get referrals uh, mm -hmm. for most of my business from referrals now. Mm -hmm. And I call them. And, you know, people nowadays are busy and uh, all the phone calls that they get. So they won't call you back, you know. And so my rule is I'll touch base with someone about three times. Uh, before, I kind of didn't like doing that because of pride. Uh, you know, oh, gosh, they're I'm going to. They're going to think I really need them as a client, you know, and I just learned that I need to swallow my pride and call those people one more time just to see if they'll meet. Uh, because recently in the last few years, I've had I've had a lot of claims. You know, I've mm -hmm. had a lot of situations where I'm sitting down with the the survivor and and we're doing planning now that their loved one is gone. Mm -hmm. And so i'm glad i make that extra call because mm -hmm. it makes a difference absolutely yeah. but that you don't do that out of an orphan spirit mm -hmm. an orphan spirit is going to be too prideful to make that call again because what are they going to think in sonship you get your identity you know who you are you're walking in that identity and rest and you go hey, i'm gonna make that call and if they don't want to talk to me fine but if they mm -hmm. do then hey let's you know let's help them out mm -hmm. and so it's just a yeah it's just totally different that is so amazing. Well, it's been written, and I wasn't sure I was going to quote this, but I'm going to. <laughs> it's been written about you that you love Abilene and you love people in Abilene. Um, you've raised your family here. You do business here. You support other Abilene businesses. You go to church in Abilene, obviously, come to Beltway, and support charities in Abilene. And, um, you know, to me, that is such a we just don't see that always when people get to the quote unquote top, there's things that are lost along the way. And for someone like you, who've just, who's just been named, you know, top Forbes insurance salesman, that's incredible. Um, you didn't lose the things that you, that matter most to you. Obviously your relationship with the Lord, your relationship with your family, um, your kids, and just your relationship with our community. And so I had you on today because I'm thinking about young entrepreneurs and I'm thinking about young business people who are doing the comparison thing and who are operating from places of orphan spirit um, or who might be um, comparing themselves to people on TikTok that they don't even know because it seems like there's this overnight success and um, failure is not an option. Um, and I have to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life right now. <laughs> I have to do this thing right now. And I was doing some research and found out that uh, most 25 to 30, 35 year olds um, have this, what's called a quarter life crisis. It's actually 75% of 25 to 35 year olds have experienced what they're calling the quarter life crisis. And it's that stage in your mid twenties to your thirties where you feel like you're at a crossroads in your career. What am I supposed to be doing? Is this my calling? I feel burnt out. Am I in the right spot? Um, and a lot of them were surveyed, thousands of them were surveyed and around the world. And they said that they've experienced uh, that finding a job or career that they're passionate about is the number one cause. They're lacking passion in what they were doing at the time. Another top reason is, like I said earlier, comparing themselves. And then finally, you know, nearly half, 48% of them say that this has caused extreme anxiety within their lives. And so people in this age range feel a lot of uncertainty and frustration with careers because they're like, well, I, it wasn't supposed to be this way, you know? So for you to be at the age you are with the things that the Lord has blessed you with and this accomplishment that you've just received, which is like, like we mentioned, amazing. I'd love for you to share some advice with listeners who are in that age range or maybe, maybe older who might be facing similar questions and frustrations. What would you say to them today from the from the position that you are in right now first off did you just say i was old no age I was at? <laughs> i'm no. gonna use the word wise yeah, yeah, wise. <laughs> wise uh a little touch of gray will take care of that wisdom mm. um i would say first if they're asking that question they need to ask why they're asking the question are they asking it from a spirit from a place of identity mm -hmm. or are they asking it from a place of of fear you know, there's nothing wrong with asking the question. I mm -hmm. think we need to ask the question, hey, is this what I'm supposed to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and even maybe am I supposed to make this change? But why are we making the change? Mm -hmm. Are we are we walking in an orphan spirit, still trying to earn our approval of our peers, our parents, our mom, our dad, our pastors, our friends, whoever it is? Are we making those decisions, trying to please people, trying to earn our identity, 
trying to, you know, the old saying, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You know, that is, I mean, I can't say what I think about that now. I used to live that way, and now I think it's a crock. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, so asking the question on, what, why am I asking the question? What's my motive? Am I, am I in a place of sonship or daughtership, walking in my identity, walking in a place of rest and abundance? You know, what we learn from the restful life, it's not to ask what you, what you want, is to ask what you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so from that place of having, from a place of abundance, and we're all in a place of abundance at different levels, but we're still in a place of abundance uh, as far as what God's blessed us with. And then me, I don't know if you ever, uh, well, well, I'll say that in a second. Uh, my family kind of lives, uh, be the buffalo. Okay. And so from a place of sonship, daughtership, identity, rest, and it sounds like a broken record, but I just have to repeat it so many times a day to myself, mm -hmm. abundance, then, then go be the buffalo, go, mm -hmm make those decisions that you need to make, maybe even a career change. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you're doing it for the right reasons, that's fine. I mean, we were talking when we were off air earlier, not that we're on air, but <laughs> whatever that word is now. Sometimes the Lord's answer is yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the Lord is in it, and if your choice is A, you know, you know, this career, and then or B, if you're doing it from a place of identity and you're doing it to glorify the Lord and serve people, then he's going to bless you in both places. It's not a yes, no. It's a yes, yes. Sometimes we get locked down on that decision thinking if I make a mistake on this decision, God's bigger than all that. Yes. He's way bigger than all those decisions that we make. Now, we don't need to be flippant about it and just, you know, not think through it. But it's I think it's a yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as making mistakes and failure, before this last 10 years in the business has been the best 10 years I've ever had in the business. But the four years before that. I don't know if you knew this, but I did that business with Ray Templeton, you know, Ray Templeton and uh, Brian Gage and those guys and race pass now. Woo. <clears throat> Didn't see that coming. Uh, but we worked real hard for four years and we were not successful in that business. Mm -hmm. And uh, Toby, is it Toby's that was messaged this weekend? Toby Slough. Toby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A season. And you have to, you have to realize that each season leads to another season, and so after that failure in business with with those guys, I really got stuck because I thought I heard God wrong. I mean, we prayed about that, we fasted about that, we invested some serious money in that. Yeah, okay? <laughs> a lot of us did, uh, and it just didn't work out. And but I was stuck, Sarah, in that until the Lord told me one day, he said, Shane, you didn't miss me. I led you straight into that. Mm. I said, what are you talking about? You led me straight into that. He said, "You, I wanted you to learn how to fail. Mm. You needed to walk through that season of failure. And I went, oh. And we do not like that. <laughs> uh -uh. Well, an orphan can't handle it. Because mm. an orphan says, Lord, why would I fail in this situation where a son will go, a son or a daughter will go, Okay, boy, this is not fun. This is not fun at all, but you have something here. Mm -hmm. This is a season preparing for me for the next season, even though I can't see it at the time. And I can tell you now, looking back, oh, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking is nice when you look back over the last 10 years. But my our business this last 10, year, or last 10 years has been phenomenal, mm -hmm. four, five times what I've ever done in the past because of that season before. Mm -hmm. that season of failure and that season of Lord preparing us for the success coming up. Cause like you mentioned, TikTok. I mean, I've, I've never experienced overnight success, so I wouldn't know what that is. Yeah. But it most people don't, <laughs> it can't be healthy. Yeah. I look back on it now and go, Oh man, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade that time with Ray, mm -hmm. you know, flying around all over the country, trying to make this deal work. I mean, the money I lost worth every dollar. Mm -hmm. every dollar to be in that situation with him and just have all the experience and wisdom that I got from him at the time though. Oh, I was miserable. Yeah. I was miserable. I was asking why I got offended with the Lord, Oof. you know, mm -hmm. you know, and then we get in that offense and then sometimes we just get stuck there forever. Yeah. Like uh, Toby was talking about that message this weekend was incredible. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about it now. It was just Sunday, mm -hmm. but you know, we get stuck instead of seeing that as a season 
to prepare you for the next season. We're just stuck there asking why, you know. But I do think that comes from where you find your identity. Mm -hmm. If you're walking as an orphan and trying to earn God's love, then you get you 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 get offended and you stay there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying a son doesn't get offended. But a son will get offended. Like, why, God? I think we need to be honest with God. Mm -hmm. I said, why? Why did why did that person die? Why? Why did this business fail? Why did this stuff happen? But then ultimately submit and surrender to His authority and go. You know, I don't know why, and I don't have the pay grade to know why. Yes. But I trust you, mm -hmm. and then just move on. And then those seasons build on top of each other. I wish we learned as well in the easy stuff, but we don't. Not always. Yeah. I'm learning too. Learning to have to rest. Hey, I'll tell you, it's hard to rest on top of the mountain too. Yeah. Because then all of a sudden, you know what you start doing? One more. You start grabbing. Mm. You start closing your fist. You know how we open our hands up in church? Yeah. When you get up to the top, and I'm not saying I'm at the top. I don't mean it that way. But when you acquire a bunch of stuff and whatever this or success, whatever that is, then all of a sudden you close your hands around this stuff. And you don't live open handedly, and then you're miserable too. Yeah. You know, and that can be at the bottom of the mountain, wanting the stuff, the success, or whatever, just wanting those desires, comparing and all that. And then at the top of the mountain, and by the way, it doesn't matter where you are, you can always find somebody to compare to that has yeah. more. Yeah. You know, or has less. And so yeah. comparison's pretty dangerous. Thank God I'm not on social media. Well, I'd love to ask you this question How have you balanced taming that hunger? Like when you are successful, and the self, the um, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. The flesh response when there is success is to crave more. How do you balance and tame that hunger when maybe even the culture is saying, "Go, go, go! You're doing great. Keep going. Pursue more. Want more. Go for more." But how do you balance that your your success while also your contentment? Well, but I'd say. Uh... I was about to answer that, and I had a thought on and. You know, David always says and, the big and, you know, to th strive for more and be content. Mm -hmm. And for sake of sounding like a broken record, only if you're securing your identity can you balance those things. That's good. You know, if you're walking in sonship and daughtership and you know the Lord is going to use whatever platform, all these things are vehicles to bring, as Leif says, and I love it, to bring heaven to earth, okay? And so if you're walking in a valley, in that valley, you can bring heaven to earth. If you're on the hilltop, you can bring heaven to earth because that's really, when it, when it comes down to it, that's as simple as Christianity is. Mm -hmm. Knowing the Lord, knowing who you are in the Lord, and bringing heaven to earth. And what I mean by bringing heaven to earth is so other people know the Lord. That's good. You know, and it's definitely outside of church. Mm -hmm. You know, I love church. I mean, I love Beltway since 97, and, and we are a spirit-filled church, and it prepares you for the rest of the week. But the real stuff happens the other six days should be happening the other six days of the week when, uh, you know, after you've been equipped. Yes. You know, and then and go do those things. And mm -hmm. so— I'd say, I mean, I know I sound like a broken record. The only way you can balance that is through identity. Because you're right. You're either, if you don't know who you are through the blood of Christ, and Sarah, we, you and I know who we are, and we still don't know who we are. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, oh, yeah. we, we have a taste, and there's glimpses, but I'm asking for that feeling like Leif says, that you know, I mean, deep, deep, deep know. And that doesn't mean we're going to walk in in 100%. But just know so deep that when people, hey, I had it today. I had a guy, I went around him in traffic, didn't think anything of it. Evidently, he didn't like that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I I'm, can imagine. And I'm bad at a car. <laughs> so he came up beside me and gave me this big old, you know, look and it cut me off and yeah. this and that. <laughs> and it's just a little traffic example, but we are different people when we're driving. Yeah. I immediately said, ooh, how are you going to handle this? Mm -hmm. You're going to be an orphan and get on that guy's rear and honk or this, that, or be a son and realize, uh, he must be having something going on today. Yeah, give you know grace. I mean? mm -hmm. Give a little grace, you know, mm -hmm. but it's hard to walk in that. 
Mm-hmm. It's hard to walk in. Gotta walk in it by the power of the Holy Spirit, moment by moment. Uh, did I answer your question? <laughs> oh balance? yeah, you're good. Yeah. And well, I can tell you, as far as my family and everything, my wife was always a good balancer. Well, I was going to ask you. That was going to kind of lead into my next question. How? What role did she play in the last? Well, since '88, when you started the yeah. business originally, what role did Kim play? Well, Kim, a little bit about her. She was Val Victorian at her school. Mm-hmm. So even as smart as she was, she still married me. <laughs> uh, she graduated college in four and a half years and had two kids while she did it. Wow. You know, and so her uh, major was dietetics. So very smart woman. Uh, But she can, I I would say that she really knows who she is, Mm -hmm. you know, identity-wise, because she can support me in the different businesses and things like that and never maybe get jealous or, Mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, anything like that. She could just be in that supportive role and, 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 and God help guide me. You know? I know she's a prayer warrior yeah, too. She is. She is. And I never did anything. I, you know, like for instance, that business that we did and that didn't work out, we went in that together. Yeah. You know, we, if I had done that business without her being on board, mm-hmm. then there could have been a, a, a conflict. Sure. You know, instead, we both had gone into that. It was a mutual decision. It's a partnership. It was a partnership, and so to answer your question, I don't, I don't make a move without bouncing things off of Kim. Mm-hmm. You know, and and getting her insight and wisdom on that. You know, and she's just very good about. She understands who she is. She's a daughter of Christ, and she can be a very supportive role. And I don't, I think submissive nowadays is a bad word, but it's that's not how I see her, but she can just be very supportive or submissive, whatever the word is that, and it just, it just works. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. So I requested some help from your sweet family because like I mentioned before, I kind of know some of them. (laughs) So I actually enlisted Cassie to help Uh. me out with this portion of the podcast. And I wanted to ask your kids a question um, for them You know, that you and Kim both, you raised kids who know Jesus, who know the Lord. Um, You raised children who are adults now and having children of their own and doing the exact same thing. And you have raised up children that call you blessed, that that value you and your uh, wisdom and your leadership in your family as the patriarch. And I asked them to, if they could describe you in one word, what were the words that they would give? And so from the ladies, these are the top words that they described you. Uh, Resilient, persevering, protector, genuine, 100% Shane all the time, (laughs) and then determined. And from the guys, the words were strength, driven, wise, unwavering, and dependable. And then your son Tanner says this, quote, he has always been present. He was present at games, choir, et cetera. He was never too successful or busy to be there and to make us feel important. And to me, that's that's a big portion of success is for your children to want to be around you still. Like I know that you'll get together, you're, you're around your family, but you didn't get where you are today alone or at the expense of losing the people that you love or the faith that you hold dear. Um, not saying that it didn't cost anything because we know that success costs something. Sometimes it costs a lot more than we think we are willing to give. Um, but in our culture where family nor faith is, is a top value, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times the value is money, fame, success. Um, those are the top priorities. But in a culture where that is not the top priority, if you want to make it to the top, what did you do different? And I don't know if I'm asking that question the best way, but what did you do different to get to where you are today as an encouragement for the other young entrepreneurs out there that want to balance success, family, and faith. I would just say I would be real. Mm -hmm. So even real with the Lord, whenever you, I can tell you, it was a habit that the Lord gave me young in my walk is I journal each morning. And so even when I'm mad at him, Mm -hmm. You know, I will, I can go back and read my journals and go, I don't know why I'm even here talking to you, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm here. So let's talk. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. Uh, I just mean, God's a big guy. He can handle us being real. Mm-hmm. And so I would say I was always real with him. And so he just always was faithful in, in, in those times, you know, people say, golly, Shane, you, you make some 
you know, some, some decisions sometimes that are, you know, my personality is kind of big, put it that way. <laughs> and I said, yeah, just think if I didn't spend time with the Lord, you yeah, know, you know, and I spent time with him a lot each day. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think that's a real, and I don't mean it in a legalistic, right. have your quiet time way. It's from relationship. It's, it's, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he's, you know, the Lord's gone from me from God, uh, you know, to, to father, to Papa, Oh, that's good. you know? And so nowadays when I, it's funny, I talk to people about the Lord and I'll say, Papa, and they look at me like, who are you talking to? Who are you talking about? I say, oh, I'm sorry. That's God. That's God to you. He pop all to me, mm-hmm. you know? And so I would say being real with the Lord and then real with the kids, you know, if I never did, you have to have enough faith in the Lord that he can manage your spouse and your kids' emotions and all that stuff, even if you're real with them in a sense that I I would be real with them if I was in a season and said, you know, I... I'm struggling with the Lord right now. You know, I just don't understand what's going on. And I'm, uh, you know, I don't know if I have what it takes. Mm-hmm. You know, I, don't, I feel like I don't have what it takes right now, you know, whether being in business or father and this and that. And, you know, just that, I guess that honestly and realness about it was, I think that's a key. We, we shove that stuff under the rug or we don't talk about well, it. Because we need it to be polished and perfect yeah, yeah, and put and together. I'll tell you, one, that's and... not, you notice the polished and perfect were none of those words on there. No, <laughs> no, no one would ever describe. And I don't mean that as a badge of honor. Right. I just mean that as I just was really real with them. Mm-hmm. You know, that I'm struggling right now and I need you to pray for me. I'll go to my wife now and say, honey, I don't have it today. Yeah, I don't have what it takes today. I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for me right now. Mm-hmm. And she's got to be, her identity has to be enough in Christ, not in me, mm-hmm. to be able to not get insecure in that situation and then cover me in prayer. Mm-hmm. That's the reason we can't get from each other what we can only get from God. That's good. You know, and our identities from there. Because then when the other is weak, we don't look down on that one or a wife or it say the the roles were reversed, and she was bringing in the income, and she needed me to pray over her. You know, if I oh my gosh, she didn't have it today. How are we gonna How are we gonna make it? Instead, she knows God's got it, and she'd pray over me and stuff. And so I would, I would just say being, I guess, real is the best is the best way to answer that. And not trying to fake it. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier, too, about emotions. Like, God is not afraid of your emotions. So, in fact, he created them. And they're there to give us a sense of, hey, something's going on here. I need to take this to the Lord to help me unravel this emotion and get to the source of what's going on in my heart or in my mind. Well, we were were traveling recently. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we were with a couple uh, eating at an Italian place. It was awesome. And their son had cancer. He's in his 20s. And right now he's walking through a season. He's mad at the Lord. And so we got to talking about it. This, by the way, is bringing heaven to earth in those situations at dinner, all these places when you're traveling and doing all that kind of stuff. I saw you, but you have to, I guess the key to that in walking in sonship and daughtership or identity is seeing those things as opportunities. Now you go, Ooh, this is a, this is an opportunity to bring heaven to earth, you know, with this couple. And so I told, she goes, why do I need to tell him? He's not, spending time with the Lord or anything like that anymore. And I said, you know, why don't you tell him to journal and just tell tell him to tell the Lord all about it. Tell him to his emotions, why he's angry, he's confused, this and that. Just tell him to lay it out there. Now, you know, don't have to do it disrespectfully, but be real with the Lord and let's just see what happens. And she looked at me, she goes, oh, my gosh, I never thought about telling him that. And I said, I know because everybody just said, oh, well, you're a Christian. Everything's fine. God's got it. He's going to work to the good for this. And he is. But those are all those cliche bullcorn stuff that the church always says. And we just need to, we need to sometimes be mad at the Lord mm-hmm. in a, you know, you know what I mean? In a, in yeah. a right way, just real with him. Says, I don't understand it. Why did I get cancer? Why did, why did this, why did this business fail? Why does this person have this and I don't? I don't understand. I need you to open up my eyes to that, mm-hmm. you know. And I think he respects that. I mm-hmm. mean, he's God's a big old boy. Mm-hmm. He can handle that. He's been here a long time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you may not always get the answers that you're looking for, but you can find comfort. Well, ultimately, though, mm-hmm. you get back to the identity mm-hmm. and you go, ah, you know, it's above my pay grade, Lord. I'll just submit and surrender to you. You know, when I'm talking about bringing heaven to earth, 
I talk about bringing heaven to earth each day, each person, each situation through a place of identity. But then once you've done that, ultimately just submitting, surrendering to the Lord, because there's just only it's in his hands, Mm -hmm. you know. And so because if we try to control and manipulate all those things and, you know, gosh, aren't we a controlling society? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. You know, and it's shoot. That's where all the anxiety. When I find myself being anxious, I'm not submitting and surrendering to the Lord. I, when I get that knot, you know, and all of a sudden I go, whoa, 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 what are you doing here? You know, and then I realize I need to submit and surrender. And then, you know, that peace that comes beyond understanding comes, we go, oh, yeah, he's got it. Mm-hmm. Not only does he have it, he's given us the ability to do from the place of identity. What does Leif say? Do, have your identity and then do not do for your identity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep those straight, though. Yep. Sometimes we get them backwards. (laughs) We need the Holy Spirit to help us unravel it. So, yeah, to answer your original question, I think just being real with God, real with people. Well, I would love to ask you one final question. What encouragement would you give to people who are listening to this podcast and they're either just starting out their careers or they're in the middle of it, or maybe they're just starting in their family, or they're in the middle of child rearing. What would you say to people who are just starting out or in the middle of it? What encouragement would you give them that you want to leave with them today? I tell myself all the time, don't take life so seriously. Don't take life so seriously. Don't take your career. So don't take yourself so seriously. You know, realizing that God has got it. He's got it through the blood of Christ. And he's given us what well, all that we need through through that relationship. And then the different abilities we all have, you know, he's given us those abilities. We do have what it takes to get the job done. We all do because of God, because the abilities he's given us. And then just have fun with it. You know, have fun. Quit taking. We are, especially the last three years, mm-hmm. we are taking life so seriously. You know, ultimately it's. Know, know Jesus, bring heaven to earth until he either comes back, which when he comes back on that white horse all tattooed up and everything else, be fine with me if it's tomorrow, mm-hmm. okay? Or we die and go be, go with him, and then we come back, you know, in, in that time. I mean, ultimately, that's what's going to happen. So there's really, we take things too seriously, mm-hmm. you know, and then there is a lot of serious stuff in the world. I'm not making light of that. But we don't need to take ourselves so seriously. I think mm-hmm. life is serious. I think there's things we need to battle. We need to realize that we're made to battle from a place of identity, from a place of sonship and daughtership. So there is a battle out there, and we do need to take that seriously. But I wouldn't say taking that, don't take ourselves too seriously. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Laugh at ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, I just made some mistakes the other day, and I was getting all mad about it. It was with clients. You know, I'd done some form wrong and something, you know, and I was all upset and I called him up, apologized. He said, you took care of it. It's all right. You know, don't worry about it. You know, and I, sometimes we just kind of get too, too yeah. serious. Well, that's, that's a mark of character is to be able to laugh at yourself when you make a mistake. Well, well I've been <laughs> laughing a lot. So, <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining the Beyond Sundays podcast and for all your wisdom and insight. I really appreciate your time. All right. Appreciate being here. Thanks so much for joining the conversation today with Shane. I just love his personality. Well, in his words, his big personality. He is just such a genuine human being and you get what you get with Shane, which I love that about him. I also loved hearing about his journey of learning to live and work from a place of sonship and rest. And don't we all need those reminders? I know I do. His honesty also regarding past failures and how he's handling success today is also equally as refreshing. I'll link all of the books that Shane mentioned in today's episode in our show notes. And before we leave, I want to just end with this. Be the buffalo. Whatever you are doing, do that from a place of identity, rest, and abundance, bringing heaven to earth. Whatever you do, glorify the Lord and serve people. We hope you guys have a wonderful week. Be blessed and remember, God is moving and He's moving in your life too beyond Sundays.